So today I'm talking about what it's like to be half half. So for me, I'm half Thai and I'm half English. Um, so I'm a mixture of both. And incidentally, my mother's family, my Thai family, is actually Thai Chinese. So that makes it more interesting, I guess. Um, so features wise, I have, um, well, my colouring obviously is is from my uh, Thai, Thai side. Um, you know, my hair's like way too dark and my eyes are too dark to be, um, to be your typical British look. Um, and it's funny because people say that the shape of my eyes is what gives me away. Um, actually sometimes people will even guess that I am like, they'll think I'm half Chinese or something because of the shape of my eyes. Um, so that is interesting because even though my eyes aren't like, you know, smaller like an Asian person's, even though they're bigger than an Asian person, there's something in the shape of my eye that gives it away. Um, my nose, uh, my nose is not your typical Western nose. It's not a complete Asian nose either, but it is, uh, hmm, I don't know, I think my nose is, is kind of, uh, more Asian than Western. It's, it's kind of like one of my Asian features. Um, and then freckles, like I have very fair skin and I have freckles, I get freckles very easily and that's definitely from my, uh, from my western side. So that's my, um, appearance. Um, I think being like from two completely different backgrounds in a way, like having two parents from, from different backgrounds, uh, means that you don't quite fit into either camp. So uh, I think that is the weirdest thing. Um, you are not really seen as being, you know, British or Thai, actually. You're somewhere in that grey area. And uh, that is the weird thing. Um, also, people constantly ask you where you're from. I've had this question all of my life. In fact, if there's been one question that people have asked me, maybe like the question, it would be where are you from? Um, when I was younger, this used to annoy me to pieces because when you're like a teenager, you don't want to be different, you want to fit in, you want to be like mainstream. Um, now, I don't see it as a bad thing. I think, well, yeah, why wouldn't they ask? In fact, uh, I would probably ask people as well, you know, I would be curious as well. So, I don't see it as a bad thing. The other thing is, um, you know, here in Europe, I can walk on the street, street and people will not look at me twice. Honestly, I'm just like, you know nothing special, like just standard. Whereas in Thailand, I don't know, I find that people stare a lot more, they really stare a lot. Um, and uh, I've had some weird um, experiences there, like people, literal strangers, you know, have sometimes asked me like, oh, can I take a picture of you, uh, with you, and uh, things like that, which, you know, for me, just seems really odd. Uh, so I've had that. Um, then there's the other thing that for Asian standards, like I'm just way too, <laughs> you know, I'm like a giant. Um, so, you know, uh, in Thailand I feel like a giant. Honestly, I feel so tall. Um, I'm 5'8", like 170 to 173, so I'm not like short either. So, um, so yeah, that, that, that's just funny. And then there's mannerisms. Um, for example, I some of my mannerisms I've noticed are not typically Western. Um, you know, it's like maybe a slight mannerism that I've picked up subconsciously, um, or the expression of some things. So, for example, for say elders or um, parents or friends, I just automatically feel like oh, you you just pay them more respect, right? Which my Western friends they wouldn't have to the same extent. They would have it, but then you know, to a lesser extent, um, or they're like very kind of like polite thing, especially to like elders, um, I really have that, but I noticed Western friends, they're like, hey, you know, they're on the same level as their parents, or some of them, or, you know, they, they can just like talk to someone who's like 30 years older than them as though they're the same age, and for me that's just like, no, I, and I think that's really the Asian side kicking in. So, um, yeah, uh, food-wise, I really like, uh, Asian food, I really like Thai food, Chinese food, um, it feels natural to me, it feels kind of, like, homey to me, uh, so that's, 
that's like another thing where I realised, hey, I'm not completely Western either, because some food I'll be like, hey, this is so standard for me, and then some of my Western friends would be like, oh, this is so, you know, like, different, exotic, or whatever, and then I'd realise, like, hey, I'm not really completely Western either, am I? So that's, yeah, it's quite strange in a way. Um, but then, you know, uh, at a certain point you realise uh, you are what you are, so I am what I am. You know, I'm half this, I'm half that. Um, but I'm me, you know, so that's it. You know, sometimes, honestly, you just kind of need to see it as simple as that. Um, the way of thinking is very different between like the Asian mentality and the Western mentality and I think Western culture has been taught to have this very like logical structured way of thinking where um, you need to be able to have uh, justifications for the way that y you think um, and you need to be able to dialogue and to have discourse and to be slightly philosophical right whereas um, I noticed that my Thai side of the family mm -mm, does not have that kind of thinking at all. It's a much more practical day-to-day -day thinking. Um, whereas in, in European society, I think we've been taught through our educational system to almost like enjoy the process of thinking or to engage in thinking. Um, and so it's a very, very important thing. And I've definitely, definitely picked up that aside. Um, so I'd say probably thinking-wise, I think in a much more uh, Western way, but then obviously I, I have some like traits which are, you know, like the focus on the family I have a lot more than perhaps like the Western side or um, yeah, like the, f yeah, the focus on the family, the duty towards your family, uh, the responsibility, you know, I have a very strong sense of that. Funnily enough, um, I think sometimes people think that because my you know one of my parents is Thai one of them is like British that the British side would have been a lot more proper and a lot more stricter and all that but actually both my parents uh, are ultra conservative um, so you know my Thai side of the family is a very traditional very strict very conservative um, way of being for Westerners you know they would find that uh, very very strict or old school you know so I don't know where that comes from or how typical it is but I I, I don't know I do think that perhaps my Asian side is like more stricter than my uh, than my Western side which is interesting because um, people do think like oh like oh being half Thai you know um, um, you know you probably don't have like all that um, properness and everything and it's like no 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 I, d I definitely have been raised with that also very much for my Thai side so that's very interesting um, but in summary um, yeah I think the older you get the more you kind of just look at what you have and say hey I'm going to make the most of it you know so uh, yeah I'm, I'm of two cultures and I speak uh, like four languages, uh, several of them are not even my own, so what, because of the way I've been raised, so so what, this is me, um, and yeah, I, you know, you just, well, I try to use it to my advantage, really, um, like, I, because when I was younger, I used to think that being different was a, was a huge negative, now I think, actually, it isn't a huge negative, I mean, we do have this deep longing to be just part of the herd and like everyone else but then at the same time being part of the herd is nice but we're all individuals so yeah we're all different and um, being me is also just being of two different cultures being in the grey area